Hello, hello, and welcome back to Bumblebee. I hope you're ready for creepy crawlies because this video we're counting down the top 10 haunted paintings that curse their owners. Starting with the painting of Maria Ivanova. So I want to start by saying I love this painting for one super noticeable reason, or at least noticeable to me, and, and that's her face. Her features and facial shapes are ones often not seen in paintings from this time. Usually the women are all looking very similar in their features, their foreheads, their complexions, even their expressions. She's got character and a realness about her that makes this painting capture a photo like essence. Also her coy narrowed side eye, the slight smirk, she knows what's up with you. I gotta assume this Maria was a baddie. At least before she passed from tuberculosis, quite shortly after Russian artist Vladimir Borovsky painted it in 1797. In fact it's her premature death paired with her unique candor in the painting that feed into the belief that it causes bad luck to those who look at it. That this painting had some sort of power that could cause the death to any unmarried young girl. People have blamed the painting for a bunch of tragedies tragic deaths of young girls have happened around the same time that it was circulating homes. And now the common belief is that their souls are trapped inside this painting by an evil spirit. And now another beautiful lady portrait, Marie Laveau. And her side eye is a lot more intense. It went from sultry I have a secret smolder to auntie ready to catch you doing something you shouldn't. This image is carefully on display at the New Orleans Historic Voodoo Museum where some people say that they can feel Marie's cold eyes watching them. And others say that once you see this image, the Marie will haunt you and even show up in your nightmares. As cheesy as that may sound, the tour guides do say that whoever wishes to see the painting must go alone as they refuse to go see it themselves. And in my opinion, it's pretty prominent and safe to say that there's something to believe if the staff is uncomfortable. Think about it, they're there every day. If they say something's up, I'm gonna believe them. Some visitors have even claimed that when they take a picture of the painting, their photos won't develop. Maybe that's fair though, if you sat that long for a painting, you don't really want somebody to just snap a two second picture of it and just go. So. And now for yet another lady portrait, it's mostly those. And this one is Henrietta Nelson, and I hate it. I just do not like it. Nothing about it is good or right, it's all pale and washed out, and not to get some mojo put on me, but she's looking a little dumpy. Little like a wet, soggy potato. Pruny from water, finger energy, if one could say. It was painted by William Johnson in 1780. And when Nelson, depicted in the painting, died in 1816, she was buried in a mausoleum at her home rather than the family tomb per her wishes. When her estate was sold, the new owners demolished the mausoleum and moved Nelson's remains to a church. According to legend, that is when Nelson's spirit began to roam. Some claim her expression in the portrait changed at times, or that they saw an apparition of her wearing the same clothing as in the painting. Brian Hall, the longtime owner, claimed that Banningham Rectory felt empty after the painting was stolen one night, as if her spirit had gone with it. The portrait of Henrietta was finally returned to its rightful home after seven years. It's now once again in circulation though as Brian Hall eventually sold all of his haunted artifacts at the age of 82 due to his ill health. Let's get reflective, the Rokeby Venus. This gothic masterpiece is riddled with drama and poetry. As an art lover I can say I'm a big fan of this piece. Nudes were banned by the Spanish Inquisition at the time that Diego chose to paint this masterpiece, so it's a mystery to us why he chose to risk his reputation, his class, career, and dare say even his life on painting this. It's said that this is one of the only Venus paintings where it's Venus in the mirror as the concept to not see her face in the reflection clearly or accurately, feeding into curse ideology with its abnormality. The first mention of the curse happens with the 13th century Duchess of Alba, Marie de Silva, who is believed to have taken her own life due to looking at the painting every day and being reminded of beauty aging away. The next owner was part of Napoleon's army, whose vanity and ego caused him to desert and disappoint his peoples, and he left the painting when he abandoned his country. Any owners of this piece have always mysteriously become sick or were outright killed. The painting is purchased by the king eventually and put in display at the Art Gallery of London, where its vandalism resurged the ideology of a curse. No museum in history has been able to hold on to this piece as workers and visitors become unhinged and even attempt to destroy the display. At one time, a female visitor managed to slice the painting seven times with a knife. Next is the Soul Bowl, which is so fun to say, love that energy. So this painting made waves online when it was posted on a website called Trade Me. The user listing it as haunted and wanting it gone ASAP. Having been bought in an antique shop in New Zealand, the artist is unknown. As you can see, it's got an abstract red background with a frankly dinky ass bowl painted kind of centerfold. Along the sides of the canvas, the artist had written, the shape of my soul is a bowl. This looks like someone's DIY in my opinion, or maybe like a wine and paint night your mom and her friends went to do. I'm not really pissing myself over it, but apparently after they brought this painting home, scary things did start to happen. 
She claims that some nights the painting would fall off the wall. She also claims that another night she saw a dark silhouette go from her bedroom to the painting after numerous other paranormal encounters. She decided to sell it. And now for, you guessed it, a portrait of a lady. Quite literally, that's its name. At least now. When it was painted in 1890 by Juan Luna, he named it Paz Pardo de Tavera after his wife, whom supposedly the depiction, Paz, who Juan Luna killed, possibly while still finishing the portrait, and that Juan was acquitted on grounds of temporary of insanity for doing. On September 23rd of 1892, when Paz refused to open the door of the second floor bedroom where she was with her son and her mother Juliana, Juan got his gun and after pounding on the door incessantly and seeing Paz's brothers coming to her rescue from across the street, he fires at Juliana and Paz, who would die from her wounds a few days later. According to legend, the painting is now possessed by the spirit of Paz, who brings misfortune upon its owners. Paz's owners have died in car crashes, been forced into bankruptcy, experienced miscarriages, among other reported sorrows. As to where the supposed curse of the portrait of a lady came from, that remains a mystery too. Did Luna, in his desperation, curse the painting? Was it the portrait present at Villa Dupont during the death and by some black magic imbued it with the tragedy in which it passes on to every home it finds itself in since? It seems that this stunning art piece, one hard to hold the intensive gaze of, truly lives on. During the opening night at the Met Gala, the spotlight for the portrait of the lady exploded and all the other lights were fine. I will say, this is the most beautiful and enchanting painting on our countdown by a landslide. And now the story of the Martini Man. We love a creepy Reddit story, especially one that can strike close to home. The reason it may do that for you is this story is about a painting by an artist who only ever really paints one thing, a martini bartender, over and over. They're all slightly different, but they're not impossible to find or come across. I've actually seen them myself. The story goes that five guys move into a college house together, buying furniture and decor. One roommate brings home this painting. I hate it. Zero out of ten. Frat boys have the worst decor taste, as always. Most of them felt weird about it right away. Validly so, as activity started fast for them. Apparently you could feel or even sometimes see its eyes follow you. Feel a presence or touches on your arms. After a month it escalates to doors slamming and aggressive knocking. Footsteps can be heard walking in the kitchen and then suddenly in the upstairs hallway or running up and down the stairs. One of the roommates moves out and takes the painting with him and figured he'd donate it to the bar he works at. Then they apparently also experienced paranormal activity and ended up throwing it out. As mentioned, if you research the artist Will Refuse, it shows that he actually paints a lot of the same thing over and over and it always involves some sort of ventriloquist looking person with different variations of this bartender cooking photo. The one you see on screen is the one our storyteller feels to be the most similar to the one they had owned. Up next we have our Rain Woman. This is a paranormal story classic, so you may know it. It starts six months prior to the creation of the painting in 1996, when artist Svetlana Telets felt like she was being constantly watched. One day she's sitting in front of a blank canvas, when a clear vision of the final painting appeared to her after some artist block. Feeling as if someone was controlling her hand, she sketched the composition for five hours and then spent another month refining the details. After displaying it in a local art salon, multiple people successively bought her painting, only to return it to the seller after describing a figure following them in their homes and their dreams. Owners who bought this painting reported insomnia, fear, unexplained sadness, and even the feeling of being watched while in the vicinity of the painting. One temporary owner described white eyes appearing everywhere he looked and returned the painting with an offer to pay back half of the purchase price, fearing he might drown in the eyes if he kept it for any longer. The piece was eventually purchased by a musician named Sergei Skepkov in 2008, though reportedly his wife later hid the painting after seeing ghostly figures walk around their apartment at night. The Cursed Paintings of Ashil Gorky This isn't even one painting either. This guy was popping out cursed paintings like bunnies. The paintings of Ashil Gorky, created between 1904 and 1938, are long since rumored to be cursed, with paintings reportedly falling from walls, catching on fires, and owners being visited by a black haired ghost in a blue overcoat. In one case on March 1st of 1962, a plane with 87 passengers, 8 crew members, and 15 abstract paintings by Gorky crashed into a swamp two minutes after takeoff, killing everyone on board and destroying the paintings. Ashil Gorky was an Armenian painter who from 1946 suffered a series of tragic events. His studio burnt down, he underwent a colostomy for cancer, leaving him traumatized and also handicapped. And then his wife had an affair with his closest friend, artist Roberto Mata. He broke his neck and his painting arm in a car accident the same week his wife leaves him, taking their children with her. Now left partially paralyzed and alone, surrounded by dozens of paintings he had finished or now could no longer finish, Gorky took his own life in his art studio. 
studio when he was 44. The artist and his mother is said to be his most haunted piece. The atmosphere around it deeply depressing and nauseating, reportedly leaving viewers and owners in dangerous mindsets. According to Anthony Holslag, a researcher studying the aftermath of Armenian genocides, the painter's work has come to symbolize everything we lost for many Armenian survivors, as well as offering identity and a source of strength. And now, last on our list is Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan. This is a potent piece of artwork. Look at the disparity, the grandeur. This is a massive painting, insanely detailed and elaborate. The harsh contrast of light and dark with the emphasized jewel tones of the carpet. I could ramble forever. This truly is a masterpiece, especially when looking upon the faces of the Ivans. See, painter Ilya Drepin was the most renowned artist of Russia's 19th century for his realism. His position in the art world was comparable to that of Leo Tolstoy in literature. The ways in which he captured expressions, complexion, texture, and detail is remarkable. But that meant Repen had been working a lot, and after constant tiredness, his right arm started hurting. He had had to stop working for a while and became deeply depressed as a result. Some people said it happened after he did the famous painting in 1885, rumoring it cursed from harboring too much of his pain, as well as true human emotion in an expression to not become its own living entity. While this painting was exhibited in the Tretkovoy Gallery, it had an ununderstandable effect to its visitors. Some of them were getting anxiety attacks or were starting to cry. Some were nauseous and many fled the room that the painting took up. Skeptics say it could be due to its realistic look as even the blood looks real after all. I think it's Ivan the Terrible's eyes. Another incident is when Abram Balashov, a Russian icon painter, saw the canvas for the first time. He snapped the picture and cut at it while screaming, stop the bloodshed. He was sent to a psychiatric care facility after that incident. Then on May 25th of 2018, the painting was attacked and damaged with a metal pole. Igor Podporin, the man who had attacked the painting, specifically came to see Rapin's Ivan the Terrible in the gallery. He told the police that he wanted to leave, but then dropped into the buffet and drank 100 grams of vodka. I don't drink vodka, and I became overwhelmed by something. There's also a legend about Rapin's models dying. Musogorsky, Pisamsky, Piero Grove, actor Mercy Dars Hanto, and even Fedor Tichiev died as soon as Repin began to paint their portraits. Even the Prime Minister Stolopin was shot in Kiev after Repin painted his portrait. So maybe in this case, the man is more cursed than the actual art. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe to see our regularly posted content. And until next time, comment down below what haunted items or art you may have had experiences with.